Well, hello, I'm Joey, W4LSG, and today I want to talk about what you need in order to get started with ham radio. I'm filming this video from my ham shack, which is a dedicated room in my house that's pretty much just used for uh, storing camera equipment and, and all this radio stuff. But you don't really need a room full of equipment in order to get started with ham radio. While it should be noted that a license from the FCC is required to be able to transmit on the ham radio bands, you don't need anything to get started in the hobby because you can start by listening. Now to me, it seems fairly obvious that listening would be an important part of a communication hobby. And you can get started listening with some simple devices such as an old police scanner that you might already have laying around or that you can find fairly cheap at a, a pawn shop or eBay or an SDR dongle such as this one. This is a USB uh, SDR dongle which uh, you pull this cap off here and plug into a USB port of your computer and it comes with this antenna which is less than stellar but uh, does the job. In fact, listening on devices like that is kind of its own sub part of the hobby. Just listening alone can be fairly complicated depending on what you want to listen to. Some of it's digital and encrypted and there's a lot of different things there and you might experiment with different antennas realizing that the small ones that come on these little devices are, uh, are not excellent but you can hook a connector and some coax to an external disc cone antenna and open up a whole new world of things you can hear. You can log on to the internet and you can find information about local repeaters in your area and program those frequencies into a scanner or into your SDR software on your PC and start listening to other ham radio operators. You might want to take special note of how they interact with one another, how they start and conclude a conversation, but you'll probably find that playing around with these scanners and receivers kind of makes you wish you could talk back to these people that you're listening to. Once you've studied, taken your test, and gotten your license from the FCC, then it's time for you to start looking into some equipment that you can use to get on the air. Now, a lot of new hams, once they get their license, will go out and try to buy a very inexpensive radio from eBay or Amazon, uh, like this Baofeng. This is a UV5R. They run about uh, $20, $25 with uh, the antenna and a charger and they do work. I have a few of them. While these are inexpensive transceivers that, that do work pretty well, this is not really adequate in most cases for getting on the air. These portable walkie-talkie style radios, as we used to call them when I was a kid, uh, are just really meant for fairly local short distance communication. They have these small antennas and run off battery power, which means you're not gonna get a whole lot out of these. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, what about using a repeater? And that's a great thought because the HT should be able to talk to the repeater and the repeater can talk to a wider area. The problem is, unless you're pretty close to that repeater, the low power and the poor antenna design of one of these HTs is not really gonna give you a reliable connection. So you might get told that your audio's low, you're scratchy, you're dropping in and out of the repeater, things like that, and it can be a little bit annoying to the other users of that repeater. So be conscious of what kind of signal that you're putting out and how it can be received by the other people. And I'm not trying to say don't purchase an HT. It's still a good investment, something good to listen to, something to have. Uh, you may later get into other things such as crossband repeating where you would use your HT radio to talk to a crossband capable radio in your ham shack and then that radio would talk back to the repeater and make a very useful multi-hop repeater system. HTs are also excellent for simplex, just talking from one radio to another radio. Or if you do happen to be conveniently located near the repeater, or in my case, you're going to work on one of the repeaters, this is great to have uh, in a book bag to, to have to, to make announcements or test a repeater uh, that you're pretty close to. So what would be a better way to get started talking? It may not make perfect sense right now, but one of the best things that you can buy would be a mobile ham radio. What you're looking for is something that can transmit and receive on the bands that you want to be on and something that has enough output power to have a reliable signal into the repeater. Mobile radios, of course, are designed to be installed in an automobile, which has a 12 volt DC power source. But when you first get into ham radio, you're typically pretty excited about making contacts and learning the ropes and, and listening as much as possible. So you're probably gonna wanna install it in your home. That means that you're gonna need a pretty reliable power supply to be able to run your 12 volt DC radio from your 110 volt uh, AC mains in your home. These power supplies can range in price and there's several different types, but the main thing that you wanna look for is that it has the correct uh, 12, 13.8, uh, 14 volt power output with enough amperage to power your radio. If you're not really sure how much amperage your radio needs, make sure to check your owner's manual. So you've got your radio, you've got your power supply, 
What else do we need? Well, really, you're down to the last few items. You're going to need an antenna. I was told a long time ago that the antenna is 99.9% .9 of the radio system. The antenna system will pretty much determine what you can hear and how far you can transmit. There are a ton of things to consider when purchasing an antenna for your radio. The obvious things are, does it work on the bands and frequencies that I want to be on? You often see antennas rated with a gain rating, but unfortunately, those numbers are not very straightforward. Typically, the higher the gain, the better, but sometimes you'll see that the gain numbers are just all over the place. And from there, this hobby will just continue to grow. You will become fascinated by who you can talk to and how far you can talk, and then it just goes and goes and goes. You'll probably want to play with different antennas and different radios and, and upgrade your license and just really grow into this hobby and just next thing you know, your wife's mad at you and you got a whole bunch of radio stuff. And a lot of us will refer to our yards as antenna farms because we're sprouting up new antennas all the time. Well, I thought you might find this uh, somewhat helpful uh, trying to figure out what you'll need to get started listening and talking and uh, begin your endeavors in amateur radio. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel for more ham radio related videos. And until next time, I'm Joey, W4LSG, saying 7-3.